Welcome. We have gathered this evening to be witnesses. Witnesses to the betrayal, the desertion, the violence, and the death. And we have gathered to be witnesses to our own feelings and the questions we ask ourselves. The, que the question, what would we have done? How would we have responded to the crowds, the accusations, the death? So this evening, we will witness, remember, and question. We will do so with liturgy, prayer, song, and hearing the old story told once again. And during our time, we will extinguish candles, moving from the light into the shadows. If you have not already done so, I invite you to light a candle in your own home that you can extinguish at the end of the service. Though separate, together we feel the weight of the shadows because it is only in the experience of this night can we truly celebrate on Sunday. We must first confront the death before we celebrate the resurrection. Now, let us begin. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. If I say, let the darkness cover me, and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you, O God. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike.
Let us pray. Holy One, we gather to worship you even as we hear the ragged breathing of the one carrying the cross, even as we hear him stumble and fall. Give us strength to hear the story once again. Do not let us turn away from this bleak day. Be with us in this growing darkness. Amen. This night we are confronting the sins of the world the sins that sought to silence the good news of Jesus Christ. We must also confront and confess our own sins. Siblings, we are called to be people of the day and not of the night. Let us approach the throne of grace that we may receive mercy. Let us pray. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from the past that we cannot change. Open, up, open to us a future in which we can be changed and grant us grace to grow more and more into your likeness and image through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Beloved community, here are these words of assurance. This is the message you have heard from Christ and proclaim to you. God is light. If we walk in the light as Christ is in the light, we have communion with one another and in devotion to Jesus Christ, we are cleansed of our sins.
When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said to them, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began asking him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. But Jesus said to them, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man is going, as it is written of him. But woe to the one to whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for him if that one had not been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Lord. Jesus replied, You have said so. The Shadow of Desertion, Matthew 26, verses 31 through 35. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. And Peter said to him, Though all will become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so he said all to all the disciples. Agony of the Soul, a reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 39 to 44. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and in his his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. A reading from Mark, chapter 14, verses 32 through 41. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, He threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake! and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words, and once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Father, the hour is come. John 17, 1 through 6. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, 
so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. A reading from John 17. I am not asking that you take them out of the world, but I am asking that you protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you've given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. A reading from the Gospel of John, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 5. The Arrest in the Garden. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. Then the soldiers led Jesus into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple cloak, Twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on Jesus' head. They began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed. They spat on him. And they knelt down and paid homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of his purple cloak. They put his own clothes on him. And they led Jesus out to crucify him. Crucifixion, a reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verses 33 to 39. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, 
truly this man was God's son.